Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green Transmogrify deck whose goal it is to use either Transmogrify or Lucas minus 2 ability on one of our many creature tokens and then we don't have any actual creatures in the deck besides Titan of Industry so we're guaranteed to hit it with Transmogrify or the minus 2 and then put the powerful 7-7 Elemental into play with Reach and Trample, can gain 5 life, destroy artifacts or enchantments, make a 4-4 Rhino token and put a shield counter on one of our creatures get to choose two of those modes, so a great curve topper to cheat into play as early as turn 3 in this deck, as many of our token makers include cards like Emergent Sequence, Courier's Briefcase and Careful Cultivation which can be channeled for 2 mana, that way we can potentially Transmogrify on turn 3, and these cards also give us a target for Transmogrify which will then turn into a Titan. So that's the basic idea of our deck, but we can also play a pretty nice mid-range game plan thanks to cards like Fable of the Mirror Breaker, making the Shaman token which we can also target with Transmogrify, making some treasures in the process which can help us hardcast some of our spells, and then the second chapter can also help improve our hand, maybe get rid of some extra ramp cards if we don't need them anymore to find more powerful cards instead, and the Reflection of Kiki Jiki also an awesome card to combine with Titan of Industry as it has such a powerful ETB effect. And then we also have Aseka's Chariot, which is great for many reasons, can cast it on turn 3 thanks to our many ramp cards. The cat tokens even get pumped by Kahira, which we get to play as companion, as our only creature is an elemental, but it also happens to synergize with our cat tokens. And then the Chariot gives us cat tokens we can target with either Luka or Transmogrify, and then the Chariot can also easily copy the Rhino tokens we get from Titan of Industry, so just a ton of synergy with our Chariot. And then, of course, Luka we can activate twice, can also plus to potentially find some of our creatures. So a great card if we can get to 5 mana, so it's a bit more expensive than Transmogrify, so not going to be as fast at uh, getting the Titan in play. And then rounding out the deck, we've got a bit of spot removal with a full set of Voltage Surge to just deal 2 damage as an early removal spell. Can also potentially deal 4 if we sacrifice an artifact. And between the treasure tokens from our Shaman and potential Chariots, we can potentially deal 4 in a pinch. And then we also have two copies of Fire Prophecy as another cheap removal spell. Can also help us put a Titan of Industry on the bottom of our library if we don't want to try and hard cast it. Although thanks to the many ramp cards, the treasure tokens and Castle Garenbrick in our mana base, we can realistically cast Titan in this deck. So it's definitely part of our game plan, especially in the more grindy matchups. And then we also have two copies of Valakut Awakening. Can be used to maybe find some of our combo pieces and can also be played as a land. And then our mana base has a Den of the Bugbear, which can also make a 1-1 Goblin token that we can potentially transmogrify and just helps pressure those control decks. And then there's Crucible to channel to make some 1-1 tokens to potentially transmogrify, as well as Boseju to deal with artifacts and enchantments, and then a ton of red-green mana fixing, and then of course Kahira as the perfect companion. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's missing Accelerance and red mana, so I don't think we can keep... This one has a bunch of ramp into nothing, so I'm also not a fan. Alright, this one we can try. And then I probably just keep turn 2 cultivation into Isika's chariot and give up on our interaction here. Opponent on a red deck. Do we see a turn 2 burning tree into a bunch of other stuff? We do. And a robber of the rich. Alright, at least our 1-1 one -one is likely to survive. And then chariot's not a bad way to stabilize. Opponent caught a glimpse of our deck by exiling our Titan of Industry. So if they're aware of what's going on, they might keep up Stomp to kill whatever creature we try and transmogrify. We'll channel. That way Robber doesn't exile anything. And we actually drew the namesake card. Okay, now we could still decide to Chariot first. That way we can copy the Rhino token next turn. And we establish a nice 4-4 uh, Chariot and a bunch of Cat tokens. 
Or we can just get a Titan in play, although next turn is going to be a little bit less exciting. So I'm not actually hitting Chariot here. And the cat tokens can trade for Emissary. Our opponent also missed a land drop, so we're not afraid of Torbran, although Embercleave could still come down. It's going to be an Annex for now. Okay, there's also an enchantment that we can destroy with our Titan, so another reason to wait. So yeah, let's go ahead and probably just sacrifice our 1-1. Probably could have played a tap land here, but that's okay. Turn it into a Titan. Destroying an enchantment, and then we can either gain 5 or make a Rhino, which seems better. And then we can crew using probably the Rhino token itself. Attack. And I think we keep the cat tokens back in case Torbrand shows up. And our opponent's happy to trade. Which is good, because then future copies of Annex don't have as much devotion. And our opponents may throw in the towel here. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a turn 3 chariot. No transmogrify effects, but kind of still like keeping this. Turn 3 chariot powerful in any format. And uh, if we draw Luka or transmogrify, we'll be in business. Voltage Surge could also come in handy against smaller black aggro, presumably. But briefcase, they cannot fatal push, so worst case scenario, Thoughtseize takes Chariot. And we even have Kahira to eventually pump our cat tokens. So that's a cute interaction. Titan also an elemental. And we can trade for gutter bones since I'm not too attached to my 1-1 token. And the knight the play. We can uh, Voltage Surge it later, and we actually drew Transmogrify. Still happy playing a Chariot first anyway, but by trading the 1-1 one -one we took away the opportunity to cast the Transmogrify. Although still had to watch out for a potential Fatal Push in response. So if Knight attacks, I don't really want to block with Chariot and lose it to them pumping, but it is a way for us to make sure the opponent taps out. So it's not a horrible idea. Could also just single block with the Cat and then force them to pump. Maybe that's actually the best line. Force them to tap out. And then the coast may be clear for Transmogrify if we draw land. And if not, we can still Voltage Surge the Knight. And play briefcase. Alright. Let's do it now, I think. Or do we wait? I guess we can wait. So we won't be able to crew chariot here. But I'll keep the cat back to maybe make the same play as last turn. Blocking knights, forcing them to pump, and then we can voltage surge. Now a thought sees taking transmogrify would be awkward. And a fatal push could also be problematic if they can keep it up. Knight attacks. We'll oblige. And yeah, this is not going to work out well for them. Opponents fully tapped out and we're ready to transmogrify, get a titan, copy the rhino, and completely take over the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hands missing a transmogrify effect, facing presumably blue-white control. Which is not our favorite matchup. Don't think we can keep this. Alright, this has more potential. And then probably get rid of a Titan. So sequencing shouldn't matter too much. Turn to Cultivation into Chariot, hopefully. Turn for Luca. Put on blue black. Maybe Asper control. Make that Sultai. Well, they could have a fatal push here for the 1-1 token. 
so we won't be able to play Chariot, but we get to untap. Hope to dodge a counterspell, which we did. Just an omen. Okay. This could be an ultimatum deck. In which case, their opponent's not going to have a ton of counterspells. They're mostly going to be tapping out. And a cultivate for ramp. Okay. So definitely it looks like an emergent ultimatum deck. So we gotta get in while we can. But yeah, turn for Luca here looks great. Even have a Den of the Bugbear as an extra threat in case of a Sweeper. Although their Sweeper is Extinction Event, or Elemental has an odd mana cost, so it won't die alongside our tokens at least. And then make a Rhino plus probably Shield Counter as opposed to the Strength or Enchantments. And then I think shield counter on Titan itself, as opposed to the Rhino token, although that's also a choice we can make. Alright, so not a bad turn 4 here. Let's see if they have something like Extinction Event. And then next turn we're most likely activating Den, can maybe use the minus 2 on the Goblin token that's left over. Just a Gross Parallel. And the Languish, okay, that works. Similar to Extinction Event here. So, what's the best we can do? I could Emerge in Sequence, minus on the Sequence, so we can Crew Chariot attack for 11. Still not quite lethal. If I animate then and attack, that's also 11, so not quite lethal. Anything we can do with Luca to help out here. Because this exiles and doesn't destroy, so we can't mine us on our own titan. So I'm trying to figure out if there's any way we can present lethal here. Alright, our opponent explodes, I guess. We uh, still got there somehow. If our opponent casts Emergent Ultimatum next turn... Yeah, they might have been able to, but at least we would have been pretty far ahead on board. Where uh, we might still be able to kill them even through Emergent Ultimatum. But yeah, tricky spot here. Animates... Then that's 4 plus 7, 11. And if we want to crew chariots, I guess I could minus on the den itself after animating it. But then we're better off just playing emergent sequence, minusing, getting another titan, crew chariots, and then we have 11 damage, which is not quite enough, but at least leaves us in a pretty great spot for next turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We will need an extra red source to cast Luca on turn 4, but I think we'll give it a try. Up against a red deck. And a Kumano turn one. Okay. So a scary start. Can uh, keep a voltage surge now. And Soulscar Mage at three toughness. We won't be able to kill. So let's untap. And then we can wait another turn on cultivation and just voltage surge the uh, etching here. Opponent attacks. There was no risk of Ember Cleave just yet, otherwise I would have killed it before attacking. And now we can end of turn cultivation, untap, play Luca. At least that's the plan. Could have played a tapped stomping ground as well if we wanted to. Torbrand's carry. So we'll take four, but our opponent is tapped out at least. And then getting one Titan helps us get a second. So definitely making a Rhino, and then we can either put a shield counter on the Titan itself perhaps even though it can still profitably block as is. Could still be relevant in case Embercleave shows up next turn. Yeah, I think shield counter is probably better than 5 life at 13, and then the next titan can maybe gain some life. They want to put shield counter on warrior, even though 
It could maybe survive an attack from like a Soulscar Mage, just because we're likely to want to minus Luka and turn it into another Titan. Alright, Stomp makes it a little harder. Although we're not too far from hard casting another one thanks to Castle. And actually, a bit of a nombo here. The Stomp turning into minus one, minus one counter from Soulscar Mage instead of dealing four with Torbrain. So Rhino actually survived. So now we can still minus and get another Titan. So weird to rules interaction here. And I will make another 4-4. Four, four. Do we want to gain 5 or another shield counter? And yeah, our opponent scoops it up. And next turn we can just hard cast another Titan as well if we'd like. And we get to level up. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with an excellent hand. Can't quite Voltage Surge on one. Well, now we can. Turn to Cultivation, into Chariot, into Luka. So the perfect curve can kill Elvish Mystic, which they must have drawn for the turn. Black, green, so maybe a fight rigging deck. Castle untapped thanks to the forest that is stomping ground. Another elf that they must have drawn. Now they could have a fatal push here, but they didn't cast it. And we want a chariot first anyway. Okay, so everything's in position, and a Rotting Regisaur confirms fight rigging. And that can block a Chariot, so it's pretty decent here. But for now, we're just gonna play Luka. And then, where do we minus is the question. Probably just on the 1-1 token. And then shield counter plus rhino seems fitting. Could also put shield counter on the rhino itself. Could have also crewed Esika's chariot, put a shield counter on it so it could attack and copy the rhino. Don't know if that's quite worth it. Next turn we can try and set up an attack and then finish off Regisaur with a voltage surge if it doesn't get a counter from a fight rigging that is. I'll put counter on Titan itself. And if they do play Fight Rigging, next turn we can minus again, get a second Titan, and get rid of their enchantment. Opponent's going real big here with Ugin. And yeah, there's the namesake enchantment. Okay, so I'm kind of scared if our opponent's playing Ugin and they manage to hit it with Hideaway. So what's it gonna be? Elder Gergroth, not bad. Okay. So Regisaur doesn't have a good attack. Get to untap. And then we can get another Titan, blow up Fight Rigging, attack with our first Titan, and probably send in Chariot as well. Although a 7 Toughness Regisaur can block it, and then Voltage Search wouldn't be able to finish it off. Although they might be tempted to block with Gargroth, which we can finish off with Voltage Surge. So close call here. Screw Chariots. Minus on a cat. Can all become stronger. Blow up enchantments. And then... Shield counter on the second titan might be better than shield counter on chariots. And I'm gonna try and attack and hope they block with Gargroth. Send in the other 4-4 four four as well. Alright, opponent's gonna block with Regisaur, block with Gergroth, so we lose Chariots. Opponent triggers Gergroth, but we can finish it off at least. And then we still have two Titans with shield counters, which our opponents won't have an easy answer to. So I think that was a worthwhile attack. And then Kahira in hand, next turn we can start plussing Luka. And Kahir will also pump our Titans for what it's worth. Opponents playing their own copy. Okay, let's hope to dodge another fight rigging, I guess, but there it is. Uh oh. 
If our opponent hits an Ugin, this could be game over. But our opponents must have missed with Hideaway and scoops it up. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and we've got a pretty much ideal hand here. Turn to probably go for Cultivation so we can dodge Sorcery Speed Removal. And then if we wanted to, we could Chariot first and then Transmogrify, depending on the matchup. And even if they do have removal here, we can maybe still uh, play our second mana generator. Opponent taps out for a Robber of the Rich, so not her mono red deck. And I'm kind of liking Chariot before Transmogrify, so next turn we can copy our Rhino token. And so we actually still have the mana to cast Chariot, which we won't if we lose our Monk. So worst case scenario, I guess like a Goblin Chain Whirler killing our 1-1 Monk token, in which case we can still get more mana going with Sequence and or Briefcase. But if they just tap out for another random creature, Transmogrify is probably game over, making a Titan, copying the Rhino token. Alright, it's just gonna be Bone Crusher Heart cast, whereas Stomp might have been more useful for preventing Transmogrify, but of course her opponent needs to worry about Chariot as well. Look how we cannot quite cast. So let's go for Transmogrify, and I think I hang on to my Monk and just Transmogrify one of the cat tokens. And then I guess we'll crew Chariot first. Get a Titan, and our opponent concedes. We can copy our Rhino token, be super far ahead on board, and maybe next turn get another Titan with Luca. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's missing an enabler for Transmogrify, unless we count Asika's Chariot on four. So this hand's a little bit on the slow side, I think. Titan doesn't help. We can Awakening, but then it's gonna be like turn five before we make something happen. So let's take a mulligan, and this is better. Although we are missing a green. Put a Titan on the bottom. And then turn 3 Fable will be our first play, but it's likely to find green mana for Chariot on 4 at least. So it's not going to be the most explosive start. But our opponent also not playing anything, so that works. Opponent's got their own Fable, so this might be the Torrential Gearhulk Transmogrify version. Let's play our own Fable. And then next turn I could potentially second main, play Luka after attacking and making a token. But I uh, have to watch out for Sensor, and they could easily kill my Shaman, which they did. So it's going to be a Chariot first instead, hoping there's no Counterspell. Although they didn't have one earlier, although I guess they also didn't have an opportunity to cast it. So, Sequence probably one of our weaker cards. Do we still want to keep a Briefcase? If they counter Chariot, I might want it. Prophecy answers Shaman, although opponent's going to use a different Transmogrify effect targeting their treasure, so Prophecy doesn't necessarily stop it here. So, maybe I just get rid of Prophecy. And make sure we can cast all our spells on Curve. They could also have a Prismari command to destroy your artifact. So it could be tricky to actually get our minus two to resolve successfully. Bone cycling a Shark Typhoon. So yeah, definitely points towards some Transmogrify shenanigans. If we do get a Titan in play, we can take out Reflection as an enchantment. So that's important. Shaman attacks. Okay, so I could crew chariot and block. Uh, could be bad if our opponent has like a sweeper to take out everything. Problem is if I block with a cat I wouldn't be able to crew chariot next turn. So maybe I'm better off baiting out removal on chariot now. Uh, Prismari commands. Also card we need to get out of the opponent's hand as it will prevent us from using the minus two on Luka, so sure, 
Could also just be another voltage surge dealing four, but that's also a card we need to get out of the opponent's hand. Right, just a voltage surge dealing two. Kind of surprised they didn't just sacrifice a treasure. And we found a transmogrify. So we can play around sensor by casting transmogrify, although probably nicer to have a Luca in play if it resolves. Step one maybe to attack. That happens. Yeah, let's try this. And then I'll minus on the tapped cat. I hope there is no removal in response. Okay, awesome. There's Titan. Destroy enchantments. And probably make a Rhino. And then if we can live the dream of copying Titan with Reflection, we'll be in great shape. We can start taking out their treasure tokens as well. And we can potentially get a bunch more Titans in play next turn between the minus two and Transmogrify. Alright, creativity for X equals one. Get Torrential Gear Hulk, which can now replay Magma Opus, which they just discarded. So that probably kills my Planeswalker. Unless they want to kill Reflection with it. Alright, so Planeswalker down, but we get to untap with Reflection. And as it turns out, Gear Hulk is an artifact, so Titan can also destroy it. So step one, probably just copy Titan with Reflection. Ooh, Fading Hope. I was not playing around Fading Hope. Fair enough. So in that case, we just want to transmogrify the cat token. Get another Titan in play. Destroy artifacts and... Alright, that's enough for a concession. And then next turn we can do it all over again. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and our hand has potential but we're missing an enabler for Transmogrify and of course double Titan in hand is not where we want to be. So we need to draw Fire Prophecy or Valkyrie Awakening to maybe get rid of them. So, on the draw, do we keep this? I do like having Voltage Surge on the draw to give us a bit of interaction. And we've got basically two draw steps, ideally, to find one of our ten enablers. So it's not impossible, but it's still kind of a sketchy hand with no real plan B of casting an Asikas Chariot, for instance. So I think it's still a mulligan. Okay, this is much better. Get rid of one Voltage Surge, and now we've got briefcase to enable transmogrify. Probably will have to skip my turn one voltage surge if I want to play briefcase and transmogrify on curve. Up against a red deck with turn one firebrand, which is potentially worth killing as it can take out the 1-1 one -one token. But uh, we'll see if our opponent is interested in keeping the firebrand untapped. At least Fable gives us kind of a backup plan and uh, yeah, turn two briefcase, turn three fable now potentially if uh, we wouldn't be able to go for transmogrify. Chariot also a great option, so the fact that they cannot actually kill our uh, mana generator is useful. But a chain whirler, great answer to the one one. Okay, so I'm probably just playing a chariot here over fable. Our Prophecy, not bad either. Could kill both of the opponent's creatures to nerf the effectiveness of Torbran and or a potential Ember Cleave. Or I can get an Asika's Chariot down. If I Fire Prophecy, what do I even get rid of? Maybe Fable at this point. Then we have to wait another turn to Transmogrify. Although if I Chariot, I do need to draw land in order to Transmogrify. If our opponent plays Torbran or Ember Cleave. I guess the cat can still block a firebrand, so that's not the worst. So it's a close call here, whether to chariot or just use some removal. And uh, I think I'm tempted to just chariot anyway. 
pass it back, and then next turn we can maybe clear a path for Cherry to attack and start copying cat tokens. Alright, it's gonna be a Burning Tree Emissary. Can still follow up with Torbrain. And it's gonna be an Annex instead. That is an enchantment we can potentially take out with our Titan, but the untapped Firebrand could be a potential concern. Although, not if we transmogrify a 2-2 cat, at least. So, yeah, I'll just uh, take it here. Could make them use Firebrand by crewing Chariot and blocking, but that doesn't seem worth it. So we're down to 13. And sadly, no land. So, we can crew Chariot, attack, and then opponent may block with Annex, but most likely they'll take it. And then I can wait until the opponent's turn to Prophecy Annex. So the 1-1 uh, tokens don't get to attack. Even though it would be nicer to keep Annex for Titan to take out. Alright, so let's try this. They could also chump with Firebrand just to soak up some damage and then sacrifice it. That's okay. Alright, opponent takes it as expected. And now the question is, do we prophecy now in case we draw tap lands? I think we're better off waiting. And then we have to time our removal carefully so that um, we don't enable Ember Cleave. Alright, opponents are willing to move to combat. So let's prophecy Annex. And then I can still Voltage Surge a Burning Tree Emissary if I'd like. Get rid of one Transmogrify, or do we get rid of Fable? Probably Fable at this point. Another Chariot to draw. And we can wait for them to attack and then Voltage Surge, let's say Burning Tree Emissary if they Ember Cleave that one. Because I can't prevent them from casting the Ember Cleave by killing Emissary, as they'll still have enough attackers. Their opponent sends in Chain Warlord Burning Tree, and kind of hoping they Ember Cleave here and put it on the Burning Tree. Okay, there it is. Perfect. So that worked out. Wasted some of their mana. In a pinch, we could have also sacrificed Chariot to deal 4 to Chain Warlord, but this seems better. And then really hoping for an untapped land. Awesome. So, transmogrify one of the cat tokens, probably crew chariot first, and I'm just gonna take out Ember Cleave here. Firebrand, not enough to disrupt this. And then what else besides dealing with Ember Cleave? Make a rhino or gain some life. Prefer the rhino. And then we can copy the Rhino with the Chariot, so I'll keep everything else back. And then next turn we can do it again, maybe gaining some life this time. Bone Crusher stomps a cat. That's acceptable. And just cast it. Alright. So, transmogrify the cat token. Might prompt a concession. And then, given that we're still at 10, could just make another rhino and put a shield counter somewhere. Although shield counters they can easily take out with firebrands, it's not all that incredible here. So maybe I'm better off just making a rhino and gaining five. Sure. First strike also an easy way for the opponents to remove a shield counter. So let's crew chariots. They could combine chain warler and firebrand to kill chariots, but. We're going to be so far ahead on board with two titans and a whole bunch of rhino tokens. And our opponent packs it in. Awesome. Okay, we're on the draw. 
Our hand has potential, although we need our opponent not to have removal for emergence sequence and draw third land. On the draw, we're pretty likely to find one. So I'm gonna try it. And land is great. Our hand also somewhat thought sees proof once we play emergence sequence with double transmogrify and Luca. Red black, maybe a sacrifice deck. Don't necessarily expect my emergence sequence to stick around, but at least we picked up some lands so we can hard cast chariots and eventually transmogrify a cat token. Could see a stomp here. Your opponent on the red black mid range, presumably. Hope to dodge a fable, so just a bone crusher to play, that's fine. Don't have anything going on, but can put Kahira in hand. And then, uh, yeah, Planus Chariots into Transmogrify. Although I'm sure opponent might have more instant speed removal to interact. Kalitals also a scary one. At least it doesn't trigger off tokens dying. Bone Crusher attacks, we'll take four. And the Trespasser to play. Opponent still has access to potential Fatal Push here, which is a reason to crew Chariot and transmogrify the Chariot itself instead of a Cat token, even though a Chariot of course is a lot more valuable. But that might be the play. And then I also cannot afford to attack first, as I could either double block or enable revolt and then fatal push the chariot. And if we don't transmogrify, I don't see us winning this game either. And if they fatal push in response, it's basically game over. Opponent is seemingly holding priority, so yeah, I think this is the play. Get a Titan which will make a Rhino and shield counter on either the Rhino itself or Titan. Given Fatal Push, I think we put it on the Warrior token. And it's not going to be trivial to get past our Titan now. Another Trespasser, sure. Okay, so now we could play a Luka, minus on the Rhino, if they try and Fatal Push, it just removes the shield counter, so they would need two of them. That seems reasonable. Could also just go with Briefcase plus Fable, get those going, as Fable will eventually combo nicely with Titan. So maybe that's better, although having a Luka in play that they kind of need to pressure is also pretty decent. So we'll try this. And then they would need two instant speed removal spells to foil this minus on the Rhino. Which they may have, but we'll see. Alright, Fatal Push. Plus something else. Another Fatal Push. Okay. At least we got those out of their hands. We'll pass. And they probably have to pressure Luca now. And potentially lose some valuable creatures in the process. Do have to watch out for Kalitals growing to a size where we won't be able to handle it. Although we can always transmogrify Kalitals in a pinch. Alright, so all three at Luka. So we won't be able to save it because of Menace. But we can set up some reasonable blocks. Block Bone Crusher, double block Trespasser. Okay, Trespasser transforms. Yeah, we have a, a lot of options here. Can play Briefcase into a Seekers Chariot, switch it back to daytime. We can just transmogrify the cat, get another Titan. Plus maybe play a Briefcase first and I guess just transmogrify the 1-1 one -one token. Those are all options. Titan could attack, although we could put a shield counter on it first. So what's the play here? I kind of want to get the Chariot going first instead of playing a second titan. 
And then next turn we'll go for it and hope to dodge a Thought Seize, I suppose. And at this point it's unlikely for them to have another Fatal Push as they already played two of them. Although I guess a Stomp could also be a concern. So we can Briefcase plus Transmogrify. That resolved. Alright, abandon Mire in response. Can get back Bone Crusher and then Stomp. Fair enough. It's a nice play from the opponents. But now maybe our reflection will be safe. And do we feel like attacking? Not really. Although if we get rid of Kalitas, that opens up Chariot to attack. So maybe Titan is fine to get in there. Right, let's get rid of Kalitas. Our hand's still pretty decent, can hard cast Titan, Kahira will pump all our cats, which then also line up nicely against all the three toughness creatures. And still have a chariot, so we can play a mid-range game just fine here. Voltage Surge, also useful. Is playing Titan just a best play here? Or we can Fable, Kahira, and Voltage Surge. If they kill Kahira, that would be awkward, so maybe just going for Titan is fine. And then we'll go for a Rhino and Shield Counter. And in response I'll crew the Chariot, tapping my cats, and then I'll put the Shield Counter on the Asika's Chariot here, I think. Attack, copy, Rhino. They can jump with a zombie just to get rid of a shield counter, but at least we'll get to copy more rhinos in the process. Okay, pass it back. And our opponent packs it in. Yeah, they're pretty far behind. So despite lots of insta-speed removal to potentially mess up or transmogrify, we were able to play around it a little bit by crewing chariots and eventually just outgrind them, despite a totally serviceable draw from the red-black mid-range deck. So yeah, very happy with how this transmogrify deck turned out, and we managed to rank up twice in the span of about an hour, so certainly a great deck to play ladder with as well. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.